Welcome back everybody to the second video to support the third topic, hardware, um, that supports the Computer Science IGCSE from Cambridge for the new specification 23 to 25. We're going to be sticking with this, this first section in hardware, remember it is a massive section, and we're going to be looking at these three elements under computer architecture. We're going to be looking at the core, the cache and the internal clock. We're going to be looking at fetch, decode and execute cycle, and we're going to be looking at instruction sets for a CPU. The final bit, embedded systems, we will cover, because this is quite big as well, we'll cover in the next video. Okay, so we're going to start with the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Now we learned in the last video that the CPU, the brains of the computer, responds to and processes all of the instructions which take place inside of your computer. To carry out a set of instructions, the CPU first fetches some data, first brings, gets some data and instructions from the memory and stores them in a suitable register. It then establishes and carries out the actions that are required for the instruction. Both the address bus and the data bus are used in this process. Once this is done, each instruction needs to be decoded before finally being executed. The cycle of fetching, decoding and executing an instruction is continuously repeated by the CPU while the computer is turned on. It's basically the CPU talking to the component parts of the CPU and whatever is stored in the RAM in the, um, in the main memory. So I've got some diagrams here to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so first of all, on the right hand side we've got the CPU. On the left hand side we've got the main memory. Okay, here the thing that's highlighted is called the program counter. Now what does this do? Well it knows, I know the address in the memory of the first instruction. It knows where the first instruction lives in here, in the main memory. So, at the start of the fetch decode execute cycle, the program counter, or the PC as it's known, holds the address in memory of the first instruction to be fetched from random access memory, from RAM. Okay, so let's get this thing started and move on to step one. The main, sorry, the, the memory address of the first instruction stored in the PC, in the program counter, is copied to the memory address register. Okay, so it's copied from here to here. It then goes along the address bus, so the main memory address stored in the MAR now, it's been copied from here, into here, is placed on the address bus to go to the RAM memory. Okay, takes it to there. Um, the instruction stored in this memory address, yeah, the instruction stored in the main memory at the address on the address bus is put onto the data bus. Okay, this is this orange, orange line here. And this is transferred to the memory data register. So it's going, so it's, it's looked for it in the main memory, it's found what needs to be done, and it's put what needs to be done onto the data bus and taken it to the memory data register. The instruction stored in the MDR, yeah, is copied to the instruction register here. The PC is incremented by one. And finally, step six, the instruction stored in the um, in the instruction register is decoded. Okay, we mentioned this in the last video, but I do want to talk a little bit more about the internal system clock, um, and because it is part of, of the CPU. It's the part that sends out a regular electronic pulse, which synchronizes, or rather keeps in time, all of the components in a computer. The frequency of the pulses is known as the clock speed, and the clock speed is measured in hertz. The higher the frequency, the more instructions can be performed in any given moment of time. Okay, processors commonly run at a rate of three gigahertz to five gigahertz, which is three billion to five billion pulses or cycles per second. So it's running very, very, very quickly. But some people aren't, aren't happy with this and want to overclock the CPU um, to make it um, perform faster, to increase its performance. But overclocking problems can occur due to increases in heat that can result in instability and damage to the processor. You can see a lady here um, using her own sort of um, intricate cooling system to keep the CPU cool. Okay, the fan is having to work harder to dissipate the heat. So it's not recommended, but it can be done. 
Okay, also within your um, CPU, um, we have a thing called a core, which, um, if we think about it, is this sort of cerebral cortex, the most crucial part. Um, but in modern computers, we don't just have one core, we have multiple cores. For example, here we've got one that's got two cores in it. So when you hear people talking maybe about an, in an Intel dual core processor, it refers to the fact that it's got two cores. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Single cores. Older desktop PCs have what are called a single core CPU. That means a CPU can only execute one instruction at a time. If you're doing a ton of multitasking, have a lot of apps open, or are playing a computer intensive game, having a single core CPU can be a serious, can cause and can have a serious bottleneck. Even today, some laptops, especially netbooks, are made with single core CPUs. Obviously, that means it's cheaper, but it really makes them unsuitable for anything other than word processing or light web browsing. With that in mind, how many CPU cores do you need? I've got several examples here. The dual core processor CPU um, is generally for basic tasks, word processing, browsing, and, and light gaming. Quad core, obviously faster, for acceptable gaming performance and responsive operations. Six core CPUs are the sweet spot for gaming. The best ones to for, for your for your computer gaming. It is cheap and solid for productive work. Now we move on to eight cores. Eight core CPUs are amazing at all tasks. Great for productivity, work and heavy gaming. And then we move on to the final bit, which is where we're at now. Ten or more core CPUs um, scale greatly in price. The very, very expensive. This is the latest technology. The very, very expensive. And these are recommended only for those who rely on productivity work, or they are really um, professional gamers. Let's say. Moving on to cache memory. Now we've talked a lot about RAM, and we've talked a lot about um, secondary memory, such as um, the hard disk, um, SSDs, and HDDs. But we're going to talk a little bit more about cache memory. The use of cache memory can also improve the CP CPU performance. Um, there's two levels, of, well, I think there's three levels, but really in the book there's two levels of cache. There's level one cache that lives on the CPU, and there's level two cache that sometimes lives on, on the RAM, but generally speaking it lives on the motherboard. So, unlike RAM, cache memory level one is located within the CPU itself, which means it has much faster data access time than RAM. Cache memory stores frequently used instructions and data that needs to be accessed faster, which improves the CPU performance. When a CPU wishes to read memory, it will first check out the cache and then move on to the main memory, the RAM, if the required data isn't there. The larger the cache memory size, the better the CPU performance, the faster it will perform. Okay, level one cache on the CPU, level two cache somewhere else, generally speaking, close to the CPU, on the motherboard or even on the RAM. And finally for this, we're going to talk about instruction sets. Okay, how this works. All computer software is built up of a set of instructions, a little bit like a recipe. Instructions are encoded in binary. The fetch decode execute cycle is a sequence of steps that the CPU follows to process these instructions. Instructions are decoded as a set of sequenced operations. These operations instruct the ALU and the control unit inside the CPU. Two different types, the opcode and the operand. The opcode tells the processor the job that needs to be done. A simple operation might be add or subtract. If we use the analogy of a recipe, for example, the opcode might be chop or mix, okay, the doing. The operand specifies the data that needs to be acted upon. The operand can also refer to the place in memory, such as the register. So, what is the data and what needs to be done to the data? I've got an example here. What do we need to do and what do we need to do to it? The operand could contain the actual data or an address where the data is found. Opcodes and operands, part of instruction sets in a CPU. That is it for this video. As I say, we will move on to embedded systems in the next video because this is quite a big chunk. Thank you very, very much indeed for watching. I hope this is helping. Um, if it is, please subscribe. 
um, please hit the notification bell and um, I will see you next time. Thank you very much indeed.